On a Monday morning, just as people are going to work in the shops, offices, hotels, and restaurants downtown, a 26-year-old is driving a yellow rider truck down 5th Street in Oklahoma City. At 9.01 a.m., he parks the truck on the sidewalk next to the monolithic Murrah Federal Building and climbs out, walking away quickly to the north. A minute later, 4,800 pounds of fertilizer and diesel fuel exploded out of the back of the truck ripping a hole in the side of the federal building in a blast so large that it damaged buildings four blocks away and was read on seismometers as a 3.0 magnitude earthquake. The bomber by this point was barely over a block away, and he must have heard the blast, seen and felt the blast as broken glass and debris clatter against the ground around him. He must have looked suspicious as the whole city turned their attention towards the Murrah building, being the only person walking away from it as fast as he could to get to his getaway vehicle. The Oklahoma City bombing would end up killing 168 people and injuring almost 700 more. And when the bomber, Timothy McVeigh, was arrested, he was found in possession of pages of the Turner Diaries. And the bombing itself would end up being very similar to a scene in that book where the protagonist sets off a truck bomb outside of the FBI headquarters in an attempt to set off a race war. That's the protagonist. Viewer discretion beware, this video will contain disturbing subject matter. It's about a book that's inspired the deaths of hundreds of people. A book that is blatantly and unapologetically racist, written by a Nazi for Nazis, that contains some of the most graphic and obscene descriptions of physical and sexual violence in literature. I'm going to try not to get too graphic, but content warning. I'm Ian Stevens, and you're watching The Lucretia Report. The Turner Diaries was published in 1978 after originally being serialized in the National Alliance newsletter Attack. And when I say that it was written by a Nazi for Nazis, I don't just mean that as a pejorative. I mean that the author, William Pierce, who wrote under the pseudonym Andrew MacDonald, was a leader in the American Nazi Party, who started his own Nazi organization, the National Alliance, not because of any ideological differences, but because he thought that by holding on to the symbols of the NSDAP, they were hurting recruitment. The book claims to be the journals of revolutionary Earl Turner, being compiled and edited by a narrator who lives in a future white utopia. The book describes how blacks, Jews, and liberals have taken over the government and are oppressing white people, and that Turner is a revolutionary fighting against tyranny. It details his journey as a member of the organization to take down the system, and after proving his loyalty, he's inducted into an elite secretive council of the organization called the order. This Pierce guy was great at names, wasn't he? Eventually, the organization takes over California where they lynch and shoot all of the Jews and expel blacks into the desert in an effort to cause an economic crisis in the system because, you know, welfare. Also, they round up all the race traders and murder them in what they call the Day of the Rope. And after taking control of the nuclear weapons at Vandenberg Air Force Base, they launch nuclear attacks against New York, Tel Aviv, and the Soviet Union. Pretty soon, white people are fleeing the system to the white sanctuary in California, and Turner dies flying a plane with a nuclear weapon into the Pentagon. The narrator goes on to tell us that after Turner's death, the organization would end up taking over the entire world, that the entire continent of Asia would be irradiated in a nuclear wasteland, and that they would kill all of the non-white and Jewish people in the world. It's extremely poorly written and full of contradictions, leaps of logic, and big assumptions. Honestly, 0 out of 10 would not recommend. If you would like to subject yourself to a much more detailed description of the plot, check out this video that's over 25 minutes long about the plot that Thought Slime made. This book has inspired or influenced at least 40 different terrorist attacks. Between 1983 and 1984, a group of Nazis that broke away from Pierce's group, the National Alliance, founded an organization that they called The Order, like in the book, 
where this book was required reading, where they funded themselves by robbing banks like Turner did in the book, and where they bombed a synagogue and killed three people. In 1998, a black man named James Byrd was beaten, spray painted, and urinated and defecated on before being told, we're gonna start the Turner Diaries early and chained to the back of a truck that dragged him behind it until he died, and then his body was dumped in front of a black church. In 1999, a Nazi in the UK planted several nail bombs around London, targeted at places where black people, Bengalis, and gay people gathered. He killed three and injured hundreds, and then quoted the Turner Diaries in his prison interview. Between 2000 and 2007, Three German terrorists inspired by the Turner Diaries would murder nine immigrants in Germany. These are some of the worst things ever inspired by this book, but they're not the only ones. Upon hearing this, you might at first think, oh my god, this book radicalizes people. It takes normal people and turns them so vile and racist that they kill people over it. What mystical powers does this book possess? That's not accurate, though. At the beginning of this video, I said that this was a book written by a Nazi for Nazis, and I said that because it already assumes that you're bought into the core ideas. This book has strikingly little ideological specificity. There are actually a lot of different sects and factions of white supremacy, and this book doesn't pick one. That actually contributes to its popularity, allowing anyone who reads it to think that Turner thinks exactly the way that they do. Well, any white supremacist who reads it can think that be they Nazis, Klansmen, skinheads, or whatever. The Atlantic describes it as a Rorschach test for racists of all stripes, pedestrian or ideological. At one point after joining the Order, Turner is given a book that has the ultimate spiritual answers to why what they're doing is so important and why white people are unequivocally beyond the shadow of a doubt the master race, but of course, the contents of this book, so illuminating as they are, are not shared with the reader. And that's because this book assumes that if you're reading it, you don't need to be told. You're already sold. It's a book that takes it as an obvious fact that only black people can rape, where Jews take glee in torturing innocent people, and where marauding gangs of black people kidnap and eat white people. It's not a book meant to convince people to become white supremacists. It's a book meant to take people who are already white supremacists and make them become white supremacist terrorists. The book is somewhat famous for its technical descriptions of how to do certain things. Pierce was a physicist and he clearly enjoyed writing about the wonky details of how Turner and his co-conspirators made different things like radios, field showers, improvised weapons, and even a bomb, the construction of which is described in laborious detail with passages about what the merits of different explosives are and how to choose an explosive for a particular target. In this way, it's kind of like an army field manual that gives soldiers technical instructions on how to complete certain warfighting tasks. It also tries to give tactical advice, less the technicalities of how to complete a specific task, and more the general methods for achieving a goal. McVeigh, the Oklahoma City bomber that we talked about in the introduction, is believed to have been heavily influenced by these two features of the book. His attack, where he set off a powerful truck bomb outside of a federal building, is very similar to a scene in the book where they set off a powerful truck bomb at the FBI headquarters. McVeigh also, we believe, used the instructions in the Turner Diaries to build his own bomb. When McVeigh was arrested, he was also found with excerpts of the Turner Diaries that described the tactical reasoning behind his attack. The real value of our attacks today lies in the psychological impact, not the immediate casualties. For one thing, our efforts against the system gained immeasurably in credibility. More important, though, is what we taught the politicians and the bureaucrats. They learned today that not one of them is beyond our reach. They can huddle behind barbed wire and tanks in the city, or they can hide behind concrete walls and alarm systems in their country estates. But we can still find them and kill them. Luckily for us, Pierce didn't really know what he was doing. He was no soldier or politician. He had fought no wars and overthrown no governments, and the largest organization he was ever able to build had 2,500 members at its peak. The Independent Party of Delaware is three times as large as the National Alliance was at its height. Turner's victory was fictional. 
McVeigh failed to start a race war that would overthrow the government, and creating a white ethnostate is a lot less popular and a lot more complicated than Pierce seems to have thought it was. But that doesn't mean that people can't die in a failed attempt to create a white ethnostate. McVeigh and 40 others proved that, and probably more in the future too. Because the third way that this book teaches you to become a white supremacist terrorist from being a white supremacist is by justifying violence. It tells the audience why Turner and his colleagues feel justified in orchestrating political violence, and why political violence is a legitimate way to achieve their political goals, and in fact, from their perspective, the only way to achieve their political goals. It teaches that you can inflict terror without being a tyrant, and that you can still be good while inflicting massive and brutal bodily harm and death, and that if you're a white supremacist who wants to achieve your goals, then you have to be willing to do these things. In short, it teaches why violence for the purposes of achieving white supremacist political goals is both righteous and good, and the only way to achieve these goals, and it encourages readers to become violent. This is the reason why, in my opinion, this is at least one of the worst books, if not the worst book ever written. If you want to write a book that describes scene after scene of brutal violence, murder, and sexual assault, well, you know what, there are a lot of books that do that. Game of Thrones does that with better writing, and I definitely don't subscribe to the idea that violence in media makes people want to perpetrate violence. If you want to make your book viciously racist, that's stupid, but again, there are a lot of books and media that are viciously racist that haven't inspired the level of death and violence that this book has inspired. And if you want to describe the tactics and technical skills necessary to carry out a violent revolution, then that's beginning to approach incitement of violence, but it's also largely things that you can Google. And if people don't want to already commit violence, then those instructions are of no use to them. What makes this book bad, and especially bad when combined with all of those previous things, is the fact that it tells people why they should commit violence. That's how this book takes white supremacists and turns them into white supremacist terrorists. And that's why this is one of the worst books ever written. If you like this video and all of the other content that we produce at the Lucretia Report, consider making what I do a more practical thing for me to do for a living by supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash lucretiareport. You'll get early access to videos and all kinds of exclusive benefits, and every dollar will go straight to supporting independent progressive media. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like. You can watch another video here, and please consider subscribing here. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, links in the description. And special thanks to Rebecca S. and Mainly for their support on Patreon. Join them at patreon.com slash Report.